Hi, welcome back to another reading vlog. My name's Alex, this is Pucks and Paperbacks, and this weekend I am going to be reading the highest and lowest books on my Goodreads TBR. So it's Friday, it's 10 a.m. I'm having my coffee like always. Funny story, I went to the beach on Monday. I haven't been there in three years. It was a great time until it wasn't because now my feet are sunburned and literally my right foot has been so sunburned this whole week that I have had trouble walking. Today I'm feeling amazing though which is great because I'm doing this vlog but welcome to Alex's life where every single time I have a reading vlog set up something happens. Well that's my life. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed it because I know I did. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Um, but let's go over my TBR and this reading vlog. I'm really excited to do this. I've been wanting to do another weekend vlog and so when I was brainstorming for this month I came up with this idea. This was, I don't know who this was originally created by but if I can find it I'll link it down below. I have been on Goodreads since 2012 so my selection is going to be very large. I have since switched over to the story graph. My links are down below if you want to follow me. But I do use Goodreads still because I like the platform even though they literally just updated it and I don't like it. I have since switched over to the story graph but I do use Goodreads and the story graph in tandem. I really like the story graph for the stats and everything. I actually have a podcast episode talking about it so I'll link it down below. So for this challenge I went over to my Goodreads and I filtered my want to read list by rating and I picked the highest rated and lowest rated and they ended up being queer books. So according to Goodreads the highest rated book on my Goodreads TBR is Men of War by Corey McCarthy. I actually have an e-arc of this that I've been meaning to get around to and I've been wanting to read this because Audrey from Perpetual Pages they talked about it and basically sold me on the book. I'll have their video down below. I love books that show that there's not one way to be trans and when they explore the dark side of being trans I really love that. We don't get a lot of books like that so I'm really excited to read this one. With 176 ratings and 69 reviews, nice! The average rating is 4.59. For the lowest rated book this really surprised me. It is Even If We Break by Marika Nykamp and this has 3,826 ratings, 837 reviews, and it has a 2.95 on Goodreads. And I don't know why. I really liked their work. Last year I read their DC comic and I really enjoyed it. It was called The Oracle Code. The synopsis reads, a shocking new thriller about a group of friends tied together by a game and the deadly weekend that tears them apart. Five friends go to a cabin. Four of them are hiding secrets. Three years of history behind them. Two are doomed from the start. One person wants to end this. No one is safe. Are you ready to play? I am and I'm very excited. It's a queer mystery thriller. It's YA and I don't want to read the reviews yet. I'll do that afterward but hello I wanted to pop in because I'm editing this video and wanted to tell you how the video is going to work since I don't use star ratings anymore. This year I stopped using star ratings because I was just really stressed out and I felt a lot of pressure and felt like I was thinking more about the rating than my actual enjoyment of the book and like what was in the book. I was caring too much about what I was going to rate it. So since I stopped doing that I have such a better relationship with reading again. So instead of comparing ratings I'll just be comparing my thoughts. Now back to the video. I don't know why it has that low of a rating. Maybe it's because it's the first time they really wrote a thriller. Uh, I don't know. Goodreads reviews I could go on and on about because obviously we deal with a lot of racism, homophobia, and transphobia. I have specifically gotten like comments of transphobia on my reviews which I don't like and that is why I talk more in my podcast about why I have problems with Goodreads, why I like the story graph, and so forth. So if you really want to know my thoughts go and listen to that podcast episode but uh I don't know why people don't like this. I like the author so I'm actually going to start off with this book because I'm 
I have work all day and then I have a meeting at five. So after that, I will start the audiobook. I've been playing The Sims. I have a legacy challenge that I've been playing. And so I've been really loving audiobooks as I play. That's one of my favorite things if I'm not listening to like a podcast or something. Uh, but Joshua Bass's new song also came out today. So I'm listening to it a lot. So after work, I will start the audiobook for Even If We Break. Let's start the video. <laughs> I'm not going to show you what my feet look like because you don't need to see that. We don't need to be that personal, but I didn't think it was that bad until I actually saw it. And now it's been since Tuesday, it's Friday. I did not realize how sunburn I actually got on my feet. And granted, let me tell you that I have not been to the beach in three years. So just the fact that my feet literally look like I have third degree burns. It's just natural to my life because of course I would go to the beach and that would happen. It just feels like I can never have anything fun happen. I had a great time at the beach. The aftermath, don't, don't recommend. And I even did put sunblock on my feet. So before you say that, I actually already did that. So I, I don't know, I just should have done it again. That was on me and next time I go to the beach, which hopefully is never, I'll learn from my mistakes. I'm kind of scarred now from going to the beach. I have trauma. Uh, so yeah, my feet don't hurt as bad today. It's literally my right foot. Of course, because the last time I had a foot injury, that was my right foot. It just happens. I don't know why. Um, it is getting better, but when I see, see my feet, I'm just like, why? <laughs> But anyway, I just finished my work meeting. I am going to change out of this much better. That shirt's totally fine, but I just need a t-shirt. Now it's audiobook time. Chapter one, Finn. We're leaving the world behind. The narrow mountain road creeps higher, and with every step, Flagstaff and our small suburb of Stardust disappear. still need a haircut. I need a haircut so bad. Um, but things have happened where uh, it's prevented me to get one. So the plan for today is to read more of Even If We Break and I also have to get some work done that I didn't get done. So <laughs> that's my day. I don't think anything else is really happening. My sunburn is healing so I'm kind of like trying to avoid going in the sun. So that's my day. I will update you later once I've gotten more of Even If We Break Red. Hello, I got some work done and it's almost 1 p.m. I started the audiobook for Even If We Break and the main character is trans. He was wearing a binder and I immediately stopped the audiobook and just got so excited that I have a trans guy. So basically we have a trans character probably solving a murder or the opposite and I am so excited. Like this is everything that I that I love. I am so excited. I don't know if I've ever read a thriller with a trans main character and that could make a lot of sense to why. We have a two star. <laughs> I don't want to like firstly say that it's probably transphobia, but honestly, it probably is. Ever observes from a distance and smiles. Underneath the hood of their supple green cloak, their thick black hair is bound in an unruly ponytail, and there's a smudge of ink on their cheek. Shadows dance all across their face. Hello, I'm gonna fold my laundry and while I do that, I wanna to talk to you about what more I've read in Even If We Break because I'm really enjoying it. I have read two hours and 37 minutes and I have five hours to go. And I also listened to it on 1.5 speed. I'm really enjoying this. Basically, it is a game and I want to pitch it as if D&D &D came to life basically. So these five friends, they have had some thing happen where the majority of them were in a car accident. Luckily, it doesn't go into depth. It just kind of talks 
lightly about it, which I really appreciate. So we're following five friends who are in a cabin for the weekend. And since their accident, there's just been a lot of animosity and like, it's just really hostile and awkward because like nobody's really talking. Finn, who I talked about earlier, is a trans guy and he is awesome. I love him. I, I'm obsessed with him um, because I just love the dark and bruning trans guys. He's very new into his transition and I love that representation because I read a lot of YA that has characters who are already medically transitioned or they're on puberty blockers, all of that. And having a character who is not like that is so nice to have. And so there is a part where Finn is talking about how he also was in an accident and he is now disabled, he uses crutches, and he also talks about how he went to physical therapy and also occupational therapy because he broke his wrist. And I just love this because a lot of these characters are unlikable. Carter especially, he just keeps saying, oh, why do I have to be politically correct? And I'm just like, bro, I'm not getting good vibes from you. Honestly, I hope you are the first one to die because I would like you to get out of the picture, please. I really don't want to hear from you anymore. <laughs> we are hearing a perspective from every single character who is here, including Finn, Ever, who is non-binary, Maddie, Leva, and Carter. So basically they're playing a game similar to D&D. &D. It's a role play game and I've never played D&D, &D, but I do know a little bit about it because I have friends who play it. But this basically is like if D&D &D came to life, you know, like if you're playing D&D &D and what you're doing to your character actually starts happening to your friends and I'm sold. Like I'm loving that and I'm just waiting for the tension. I'm like, okay, come on, who's, who's gonna die? Because the two girls just went in the woods. There were some coyote sounds and screams and I'm like, I'm, I'm loving this. <laughs> I am happy with what I'm reading so far. This is really good and I'm still trying to figure out and predict why people don't like it. It could be the multiple POV. It could be, it's a thriller. So it could be how it ends. Maybe just like how the plot twists and all are done. I'm just like a simple guy. I'm very fair in reviewing books. And like most of the time I don't hate them. I feel like I know my taste. It's very rare for me to get a book that I hate or just like don't vibe with most of the time. I've enjoyed what I'm reading, which is good for me. Um, I'm just not sure if I'm going to hate this or love it because at the moment I'm loving it. And I think it's just because I didn't know there was going to be a trans guy as the main character <laughs> who also is like not medically transitioned. And I really love how it talks about safe spaces too, because like the one girl was just saying, that she doesn't want this game stuff to be over because this is her safe space and she doesn't want to suddenly not have that when they all go to college. And so I just love that. Like this is why I love queer books because queer friendships are so important, especially for teens. And just seeing them in fiction is so good. And just, I feel like queer books just have so many good conversations, even if the books are not solely about our pain and all of that. I personally don't mind the multiple POV, just the fact that I'm kind of confusing everybody and feel like I have to write everybody down because there's a lot of characters. And so I am trying to remember, but what's good about audiobooks is that we get a narration of every single character and everybody has a different voice, which I love. That's why I love audiobooks. That is kind of helping me decipher who is who, but it's fine because I am enjoying just hearing all the characters. I think it would be boring if it were just from the perspective of one character. I love multiple POV books if they're done well. I just love reading from each character's perspective as they're witnessing things go on. So here's my question for you. How do you decide if a book is worth it or not? Are you influenced by booktubers and like the booktornet? Do you look and seek out other people's reviews before reading? Because I know I do that <laughs> before I read a book. Most of the time I read the reviews. 
I very much go off of my friends' recommendations and trust them. But also, I will give the benefit of the doubt. Like, for instance, for my Patreon book club, we recently read If It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn. And I saw it having, like, a majority, like, three-star rating. And I wasn't sure why. And I was like, uh, I think this will still be a good book. And it was fine, but it wasn't, like, a favorite for everybody. So 90% of the time I am reliant on the people I follow and their reviews if I've heard them talk about it, but otherwise I like to make my own assumptions about the book and read it. So that is how I'm feeling so far about this book. I am loving it and still confused why people don't like it. I'm gonna read more of the audiobook, finish up folding my laundry, but I just wanted to chime in and let you know how much I'm loving this book. Just me crying over this book because representation is so important. I, I'm loving this. Hello, it's Sunday at 7 p.m. I have two hours and 30 minutes left of the audiobook, so I wanted to just let you know and update you on my reading. And also wanted to preface if I didn't already in this video that this is spoiler free. So now I'm in the midpoint where we have the thrills going on. I actually am getting a little spooked. I was walking around the house got a little spooked and it's from the book which is awesome that shows that it is thrilling enough to scare me which I don't really get easily scared I have anxiety so sometimes but for the most part I love horror I love thrilling things so if you're spooking me you've done a pretty good job however I will say that the only character I'm really connected to is Finn. The other characters I'm not as invested in. The synopsis implies that the majority of our characters are going to die, so I'm really just invested in Finn. I'm like, you know what? Please don't kill him. Everybody else, mm, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't really have a deep connection to any of them, so I am fine with them dying. However, there is a little romance going on, so those two characters I would like to save, but the rest of them, mm, I don't really have any uh, deep connection to them, but I'm excited to see how the rest of this book wraps up and who the killer actually is because the characters assume that it is somebody. I assume it's that same person and so I am hoping that it's not. I will be let down if it is the person that I think it is unless there is an arc there that I really like. When I'm reading thrillers, I want to second guess myself. I want to be proven wrong in my predictions. Most of the time I'm very oblivious when I'm reading thrillers, so usually I am surprised. But with this one, I have a gut feeling that it is this one character that everybody else thinks it is. But I really do hope that I'm proven wrong and it's somebody completely different. But we'll see what happens. This is a spoiler free vlog, so I'm not going to spoil this for you. But I'm excited to read the rest of it because I'm really enjoying it and I just love thrillers. I don't read them a lot and so when I do, it's a really fun time. And I'm having a fun time with this one because I just love a thriller with queer and neurodivergent characters. It's awesome. Hello, it is Wednesday and I have an hour left of this audiobook and I just finished work for the day so I'm going to finish it up now. I've had just such a busy week and I have not really gotten a chance to sit down and finish my audiobook but I'm also reading Beach Read at the same time because that audiobook is going to expire in a couple of days so let me finish this up and I will be right back. Hello, I just finished the book, so let's talk about it. I actually didn't hate it. I really enjoyed it, but I do think it could have been longer and more developed. I just wasn't rooting for all the characters. I was really just attached to Finn, and I feel like that's because we kind of got most of his POV, and I just wasn't 
invested in the characters enough and I think that they were just underdeveloped. Like I know some things about them like they are nerds and gamers and go to conventions and cosplay and all of that but besides that I just wasn't connected or invested in the story and I deal with this a lot when I read thrillers. I really like action when I'm reading thrillers and this one was thrilling but to a degree. This had mild action and thrills. I struggle with thrillers because I really need it to be super thrilling and action-packed and this one was just slow. The build-up is so slow and I believe that is for suspense purposes but in the end I was really just rooting for Finn and he was the only character I was really rooting for. Uh, the other characters just needed to be fleshed out more. All the characters were really different which I enjoyed. I really just needed to be invested in the characters and I just think overall this book was underdeveloped and I just needed more action but that is me when I'm reading thrillers. I feel so detached from the story most of the times when I'm reading a mystery thriller because I either am invested in the story or I don't care and I feel like the character is more invested in the mystery than I am because at the end I was just like okay that happened that's fine <laughs> like I'm not like devastated at what happened I'm just like okay well we move <laughs> like I don't, I don't know um but I thought it was just fine I did enjoy the conversations about classism and being a queer person I thought those were really important and there is a lot of talk about disability so even if I wasn't invested in the thriller part like I was sometimes I really needed to feel like a movie where everything is just happening really quick. If it's slow then I'm just detached from the story and the mystery and just don't really care and that's what happened here. But the conversations were great. We had queer characters who talk about safe spaces. Finn deals with his self-worth and I really appreciated that. I always say this that I love having trans characters who aren't super bubbly because that is not always the experience and so I really enjoyed having him as a character because he is just angry at everything and has a lot of self-confidence issues and he just feels like he can't be loved and so I really enjoyed his character arc. We also have Maddie who is autistic and she talks a lot about ableism and just feeling like the world is against her and then we have Ever who is non-binary and they are providing for their family and basically the caretaker for their sister. Uh, so there's really good conversations about ableism, classism as well because we have a lot of talks about poverty especially surrounding the conversations of college because a lot of the characters are off to college but they don't realize the way they talk about it so casually when you have other characters who just actually can't afford that. So this is set during summer and it is at the time where a lot of them are not going to see each other again because they're all going off to college and so this is where classism really plays a role because we have characters who are in poverty and actually can't afford to go to college and it's such an important conversation because you have other characters who are wealthy and actually can afford to go off to college and then there's others that don't have a choice and I think that's a really important conversation to have and we just talk about ableism, about transphobia, and about just being a queer person in the world and not feeling like you are worthy and feeling like the world is against you and I really enjoy the conversations. If you want a queer thriller and you don't want to get scared easily I think this one is perfect and it's just really nice to see queer, neurodivergent, and disabled characters in a thriller. Like I said at the beginning I don't know many thrillers that have queer characters so I was so excited to read this and I did enjoy it. I didn't hate it so that was my review and just what I thought of it and now let's go over to Goodreads and see See why people gave it a two star. I predict that most of the reviews are just going to say that it was underdeveloped and it wasn't as thrilling but let's see what the people are saying. So I'm just going to read some of the reviews but I'm not going to screen record because if you're really interested you can just go over to the Goodreads page but this actually has a 2.95 so it's like basically a three star but I think that this just is very divided because most of my friends are reading it a four star 
too many characters, too many emotions, too much chaos. Now, I don't think there was enough chaos and I love chaos. So I think it was chaotic and it was so chaotic that I just didn't really know what was going on. Then the review just goes on to say that it felt like it was too much, but they do say that they have adored this author's previous books, but this one just didn't live up to their expectations. And I agree, I think it was a little bit too much. Like I don't really know what was going on and that is why I was pulled away from the story. So here's another review that says there's a jumble mess of poor character growth. I don't agree with that because I think it's hard for a thriller to have character development, especially when it's set in one day or like one weekend. Um, I don't know. I think it's hard for them to grow. So I would say that there's not really a lot of character development because the characters literally just don't talk to each other about anything that's going on which is a problem when you're just sharing that they're all mad at each other because of certain things and there's a lot of like rocky relationships here and nothing is really getting resolved. Story centers around friends who each get their own chapters as a story has multiple POVs but they all sound the same. None of them have a distinct personality. So since I read the audiobook I actually didn't have this problem because the narrator had different voices for everybody. I do agree with this in the sense that there was two characters who we don't really see as often and so I was confused who was who at the beginning. While I'm reading the reviews I do want to point out that a lot of the characters are unlikable and I think that is on purpose because we have a lot of teenagers who are stuck up and feel like they didn't do anything wrong but in the end no one is actually talking about the problem. So I feel like why kind of bring things up if they're not going to be resolved or even talked about. There are unlikable characters in this story so you aren't going to love everybody and as you're reading a thriller most of the time it's going to be like that but like I have said before I needed someone other than Finn to root for. I'm gonna leave some own voices reviews down below because we do have an autistic character. Editing me back again because I forgot to mention that this book does deal with medication addiction and being addicted to medication after a surgery. So if that is a sensitive subject for you, I want to let you know. But it's also done in a way that doesn't villainize the character, which I love because a lot of thrillers tend to do that. Thrillers usually add a mentally ill character and they villainize them. So I really enjoyed that we had more of a conversation and Maddie is talking about addiction and not being villainized for it. I love that. And she along with Finn also experience chronic pain and are disabled so I am going to leave some reviews down below that you can read so you can actually read from the voices that are being represented in this book. I'm gonna start Man of War tomorrow so I will see you then. Hello, it is Tuesday. I would like this video to go up tomorrow. So I wanted to check in because I am 70% into Man of War and I really haven't updated because it's a heavy book. And it is one of those books where I'm just kind of like reading certain passages that do resonate with me and then I'm kind of reflecting back on my life instead of like escaping into a book. I will preface that this book is very heavy. I'm really enjoying it though. I knew I would love this book but I didn't realize how much I would relate to it. I'm really enjoying it. It is about River who is non-binary and it's their 
journey, just figuring out that they're non-binary. And it is so great. This is the type of book that I have been waiting for. In my last vlog, when I read Cafe Con Liche, I mentioned that I wish there was more books where there's characters who can't come out due to safety reasons. And this is the one. This is what I've been looking for and I'm loving it so much. The writing might turn some people off only because the way it's written is definitely slice of life where you have different points in River's life that we're witnessing and reading about. So that might turn people off. But for the most part, I'm really enjoying this. I definitely can see it being a favorite of the year. And it has just made me contemplate and just like reflect on my life. And I don't like that. <laughs> There's been so many times that I've read a passage and I have just stopped, closed the book, and had to uh, go and do something else because I'm like, oh my god, that's too real. That, that thing has happened to me. Gotta go. And other times where I've been like, hey, Corey McCarthy, why are you following me around? Please stop. There's also a really good commentary on being an Arab American in a small town like Ohio and how River's mother is just trying to protect her kids from any racism and how that really doesn't help the kids be in tune with their culture. So there are a lot of conversations about that. So this book is really awesome. I am going to finish it up and I will talk to you then. I just finished Man of War, so let's talk about it. I'm so excited to talk about this because it was so great. It does talk a lot about just anger and just having a lot of internalized transphobia and homophobia and how living in a small town that also perpetuates those ideas helps keep kids in the closet and this was just such an impactful story. I loved it so much. This is such a personal story and I felt myself connecting to it so much. I just love books that have trans rage. I feel like that is just something I am craving and I can't wait to read more. I'm going to be reading a lot more in the spooky season so feel free to hit subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to have a lot more coming but I just love this so much and I don't even have the right words because I just think you need to experience it. We're really just following River through their journey from high school to college. It ends with trans joy and I really thought I was going to be sobbing at the end of this book but I was smiling because it was just so liberating. This book was just so cathartic and it really did something to me. So if you've been looking forward to reading it, here's my okay to go and read it. But I want to preface this is a heavy book. It does talk about internalized transphobia. There is parts where River is not binding safely so I want to point that out as well. There is an unaccepting parent and there's just a lot of internalized transphobia and River just has to deal with a lot of transphobia that's coming their way and this was just such a great book. To anybody who has felt anger towards themselves as a queer person you're really going to resonate with River. They're a great character. The character development is awesome and I really liked the timeline because it shows that this is not a blink of an eye situation where ta-da, your internalized transphobia is gone. It is a really hard journey to go through and this was just such an important story and I loved it so much and I'm really glad that I finally got to read it. That's it for me today. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel when you do so and if you stayed till the end let me know in the comments what 2022 release you want to read before the end of the year and if it's a man of war let me know. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on queer and trans books feel free to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.